Today we're going to talk about mitosis. Mitosis is cellular division and it's asexual reproduction of a cell. Where is mitosis taking place? It takes place in the cell. More importantly, in the nucleus. Now we're going to take a look at what does mitosis do for us. How do little elephants grow up to be big elephants? Well, it is the process of mitosis. Why do animals shed their skin? Once again, the answer is mitosis. Mitosis is the process of asexual reproduction that begins after a sperm fertilizes an egg. Now, in the next lecture, we will talk about meiosis and how we get the sperm and the egg. The three reasons why cells pre reproduce by asexual reproduction. Growth, repair, replacement. Again, as we talked in class, in order to grow, we must have mitosis. In order for our skin to repair itself, we must have mitosis. Our body cells are constantly going through mitosis in order to regenerate and recuperate our bodies. In this slide we see that we have an animated mitosis cycle. Now because it's hard to actually see under a microscope the actual process taking place, we tend to draw descriptions and diagrams of what mitosis is doing. Now we could use any kind of chromosome and any amount of chromosomes that we would want in this process. Now in our picture to the right, you'll see we start with one chromosome or one um, cell, excuse me. That cell will go through this process of mitosis and after it goes through this process we're going to see that we're going to end with two cells that are exactly the same as the original. Now when we take a look at our different phases throughout this process you will need to memorize these and know these. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then of course cytokinesis. So let's get started. Interphase. Interphase is the stage in which the nucleus, as seen here in the purple, is has this information that's carried in it. And the information is chromosomes. And the chromosomes carry genes which carry DNA. And the DNA carries the blueprint for who you are. Now, the DNA and the chromosomes are in this form called chromatin. It's an unwound version of the chromosomes to where it is, in a sense, as we showed in class, like a ball of yarn all unwound in one big lump. It's a, a very big mess in, in, many, in many ways. Then you have the membrane, the nuclear membrane that surrounds the entire nucleus. Now, one thing that we do not see in here, inside the cell, we do not see the endoplasmic reticulum, we do not see the uh, mitochondria, the vacuoles, they are here, we just don't draw them so we can see this process happening easier. Centrioles, spindles. Now, the spindles um, are the two off to the side, and that's what we're going to call uh, spindles. Their technical term is centrioles, and the spindles are going to be the things that will go to the opposite ends of the cell, and they will be the reasoning for the cell to kind of split apart, and we'll see that later on. But this is interphase. So what exactly is happening at interphase? Interphase occurs before mitosis begins. Chromosomes begin to copy. Of course, the chromosomes appear as thread-like coils, chromatin at the start, but then chromosomes appear as thread-like coils, chromatin at the start, but each chromosome and its copy, or sister chromosome, change to sister chromatids at the end of this phase. Now, what that means is the chromatin winds up and gets tighter and forms this, this long slender chromosome that we typically think of when we think of chromosomes. 
then it makes a copy, an exact replica. And we talked in class about cloning, about how sci-fi movies have a person walk into a machine and then all of a sudden they hit the button and voila, two seconds later they have an exact replica of themselves right next to them. And that's what the chromosomes do at this, this point. Now that moves to prophase. Prophase, the spindle show, and they're more prominent. And then you notice they are starting to move away from one another. The nuclear membrane starts to disappear. The chromatids have all made their copies. And these are the steps. Now, technically speaking, this is the first step in mitosis. Interphase is where it kind of prepares and gets ready. Prophase is really the first step. Mitosis begins. Centrioles, or the spindles, go and move towards the opposite ends of the cell together. And then, of course, we see spindle fibers start to show. And they're coming from the spindles. Metaphase. Metaphase is technically the second. A lot of people think of it as the third if you count interphase as the first. But it is the second phase. And metaphase is where the chromatids copies line up on the equator. In, in class, we talked about it. Pairs line up on the equator. And again, we line them up on the equator. And then that way, when when this process gets ready to take place, the next phase, in anaphase, we can see that original one chromosome is up here and its copy is down here. So again, metaphase, chromatids attached to the spindle fibers and the pairs line up on the equator. And in these images we see here under the microscope, we see the chromosomes lining up on the equator in the plant cell. Will these students please report to the June, Colton Zobris, Elijah, and Ben Cavalier, Connor Davey, Clay Rowe, Jacob Lee, and Jordan Rowe. Thank you. 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 In this slide, you're going to see that the animal cell actually has the the chromosomes lining up right in the center of it and the plant cell as well. So this is metaphase. Anaphase. Anaphase is the phase where the centromeres or the bridge where the center of the chromatid copies have broken. And this, you notice the spindle fibers have pulled apart the different types. So we can see that up here we have three chromosomes and down here we have three. And these three down here the, are the exact replicas of the ones at the top. And so now we can start seeing the process take effect. Now because of the pulling and because of the, the massive uh, violent pulling apart and breaking of the uh, centromere, you start seeing the cell to split. And so we see an anaphase in the two under a microscope. We see anaphase taking place. That leads us to telophase. Telophase is where the cell splits. And the nuclear membrane starts to return. And we can start seeing the nuclear membrane return. And, and essentially the chromatids start to turn into chromatin as we see here. And we know that the chromatin then will be in a state to where from telophase we can go directly back into interphase and start this whole process over again. Mitosis is a continuous cycle that continues on and on and on and on and on. And it is one of those that will continue in our lifetime so we can grow. Now when it's doing its job, when the cell is doing its job, we move to cytokinesis. So when the plant, when the plant or animal cell is doing what it's supposed to, it does its job, and this is called cytokinesis.
again, we have a review here. And these are great reviews to just kind of go over and just see from the animal perspective and the plant perspective. The interface, we start here. Notice we can't really see the chromatids. Prophase, we start to see the chromatids. They have made copies. We can kind of see that in there. Then we move to metaphase. What happens in metaphase? They line up in the middle. We see the spindles off to the side, and we can very lightly see the different spindle fibers attaching. Anaphase, we see that they've pulled apart. Telophase, we start to see the cell split. And then we go back to interphase, and the whole process starts again. And again, there is the plant cell. The only major difference between the plant cell is we notice that the cell actually will elongate a little bit and then that allows when the cell to split that the cell wall can match back in and create the two new cells because the cell remember plant cells have cell walls and animal cells do not again this is just another quick diagram of the cell cycle from interphase to prophase to metaphase, to anaphase, to telophase, to cytokinesis. And that concludes mitosis. Now the big question is, if I start my cell with three chromosomes in mitosis, how many will it end up with when we're all done? Well, it's pretty simple. If you think about what's happening throughout the whole process, you will realize that if I start a cell with three chromosomes, it goes through mitosis one time, it's going to come out with two cells, and each cell is going to have the same exact as the original. So yes, you guessed it, three. Now the chromosomes keep adding and adding and adding over time because one cell becomes two two cells become four, four cells become eight, and it continues on. But in each cell, if I start with three, each cell will only have three. Now for humans, it's 46. We start with 46 chromosomes, and it goes through mitosis, and then after one time through mitosis, we have two cells, and each cell has 46 original chromosomes, and each cell looks exactly the same. So if you can follow that, that's really going to help you out for your next step, which is meiosis.